The pace is quickening at the state capitol with just three days left in the 2015 session. Representative Alan Peake joins us tonight to talk about the next steps in bringing cannabis oil to Georgians who suffer from a variety of medical maladies. And Senator Ed Harbison will be in the studio to look at some of the key bills still waiting for resolution. Lawmakers starts now. and welcome to Lawmakers. I'm Bill Nygut. We're at day 37 of the 2015 session, and tonight we're going to talk with Representative Alan Peake. After two rocky legislative sessions, his medical marijuana bill is finally headed for the governor's desk for signature. What has to happen next to actually implement the plan in Georgia? And Senator Ed Harbison will join us to talk about the role of the Democratic caucus in the final days of the session. But first, let's check in with Pat St. Clair for tonight's Capitol Report. Pat? Good evening, Bill, and thank you. We begin tonight with a threat from Governor Dill to call a special session of the legislature over the transportation bill, HB 170. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution is reporting that Dill will call a special session, possibly in late June, if he is unhappy with the bill that's passed. The House and the Senate are very far apart on that bill right now, but they have a conference committee working on a compromise. We caught up with Representative Calvin Smyrie, who is a member of that conference committee, and we asked him to explain some of the inner workings of the committee. There has to be some middle line and, and some give and take, uh, depending on what the issue is and, and, uh, and, and the extent of support for the issue. So in transportation, uh, we started off with uh, various components of the Senate and then various components of the House. The main component being the excise tax, which is the, the major portion of the, of the bill that, because that's the largest amount of money thereof. And then the, the another aspect of it is the other areas that, that we dealt with, uh, such as uh, the fourth penny, the uh, $250 million aspect of the Senate in terms of the Journal Appropriation Act. and. And uh, there are other areas that, um, that we'll be working with and looking at as we go forward. Do you expect that these, these negotiations within the conference committee to be smooth or contentious? Well, you know, anytime you have a conference committee, you have your bumps in the road. Uh, I've been on many, many conference committees over the years, and uh, uh, transportation uh, is one that I've served on conference committee for the first uh, transportation bill that dealt with uh, uh, the transportation uh, back in uh, 08. So uh, with that in mind, and after that we had the T-SPLOST uh, 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 elections, and now we, here we are again. So transportation to me is one of the major issues facing our state. Uh, we're losing several billion dollars a year on congestion, and uh, to me it's not only economic development aspect, but it's a workforce development aspect as well. Uh, transportation won't guarantee you economic development, but I can guarantee you without transportation you will not have economic development. So what about the issue of minority participation? That was something that was talked about a lot by the Minority Caucus. Is it something that could come up again within the framework of the conference committee? Well, you know, it depends on uh, how we measure that. Uh, it's something that I, I believe in. It's something that I think the Department of Transportation needs to take a strong, strong look at. And uh, that, is, that is not in either of the bills. But, 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 but that could come up for discussion. Obviously, transportation is a big story that we will continue to follow for you. Also today, a big compromise was announced on the autism bill, that's SB1, which would provide for insurance coverage for people with autism. The compromise combines HP 429, which prevents insurance companies from canceling insurance on someone with a terminal illness, with the autism bill, sponsored by Senator Charlie Bethel. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., our committee will convene. We will combine that language. It will stay in the bill. We'll combine that language with the provisions of SB1, uh, our autism language. Um, we will reduce uh, the benefit cap to $30,000 from the current $35,000. We think that, again, is still a very positive step and will re result in great benefit and a great stride forward for Georgia's families uh, and children with autism. Uh, and we will also include language that makes clear that the provisions of SB1 uh, will be repealed. They will be sunset uh, if and when the state 
uh, provides a comprehensive plan. The plan includes a sales tax hike of two-tenths of one percent to pay for it. Insurance Committee Chairman Richard Smith, who was against SB1, explains why he had a change of heart. I've got friends who have autistic children. I have talked with numerous families who have autistic children. Um, I'm not that ogre everybody thinks I am. I hope I'm not. Um, so I, I have compassion for these people. Uh, you know, when you have a man sitting in your office and he's got tears in his eyes and he says, my wife has left me. I cannot afford payment for my house and for the treatment of my child. You know, you've got to have compassion for those individuals. Of course, we will keep an eye on SB1 once it gets to the House floor and let you know what happens. That's it for us here at the Capitol Bill. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Pat. So now let's turn to our guests tonight, starting with our frequent guest, Greg Bluestein, who is a political writer for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. He's a contributor, of course, to the blog Political Insider at the AJC, must reading for all of you who follow politics. And we welcome Senator Ed Harbison, Democrat from Columbus. But let's kick off tonight's show with the overwhelming support that Representative Alan Peek received yesterday with final passage of HB1. The House passed the medical marijuana bill yesterday by a vote of 160 to 1. The chamber applauded Representative Peek, and House Speaker David Ralston met Peek on the floor to shake his hand. Families whose children will benefit from the legislation were also present. It was a very moving uh, event on the floor of the House. Representative Peek is now joining us from the state capitol. Representative Peek, I don't know if you've had much chance to look at any of those pictures since uh, you had this victory yesterday, but it must have been a very thrilling moment for well, you. Well, it, it has been. It's been an emotional week. Uh, you know, I, at the beginning of the week, I wasn't quite sure whether we were going to get a bill passed or not. You know, whether, whether we get, would it get passed out of the Senate gutted or would we have to go to conference committee? But I tell you, I am uh, so grateful to both my Senate House colleagues and my House, the uh, Senate and House colleagues. Uh, for their overwhelming support for a measure uh, that's going to really change the lives for a lot of Georgia citizens. It's going to bring our medical refugees home who've had to move to another state. It's going to provide an option for cannabis oil for um, citizens with eight different medical diagnoses. Uh, so it's, a, it's been a really good week, um, really special to me, uh, but more grateful for the families uh, that it's going to have a positive uh, impact on. You got some help uh, on the Senate side where there could have been some problems for you um, from uh, Senator Renee Unterman. And, and last session, of course, you and Renee Unterman sort of neutralized each other. Her autism bill and your medical marijuana bill were tied up together, and in the long run, neither of them went anywhere. But this year, she came up, stood up, stepped up, and supported your measure. That must have been very gratifying to you. Well, uh, that, that's exactly right. She really delivered this year uh, on providing a and helping perfect a bill that uh, that really did work. Uh, my fear was that we were going to pass something that really didn't provide an opportunity to bring our medical refugees home, or didn't provide uh, access to cannabis oil for enough medical diagnoses that could benefit. But she delivered in the committee last week and uh, on the House floor, the, on the Senate floor this week, of uh, making sure we had a bill that does work and and uh, and that stayed intact, so that we could send something to the governor that would be uh, an effective bill. Uh, Greg Bluestein, um, you've been talking with the governor's office about what's going to happen in terms of the signing of this bill. What are you hearing at this point? Yeah, the governor has said unequivocally he will sign the bill. Sure. The question sure. is the timing. It seems like he will he will wait to sign it until after the session in case there's any conflicting legislation that passes these last few days. But uh, Representative Peek, are you hoping to do something before that that the families who have been up at the Capitol can participate in? We, we, we have scheduled a kind of bill signing ceremony uh, on Friday at 11 a.m. where the governor will affirm his commitment to signing the bill the day after the session uh, and also issuing, I think I believe, an executive order for the agencies to start the process going to set up the registration uh, procedure which is going to be required in the bill for citizens to have immunity. So uh, I'm absolutely confident he's going to sign the bill. It may be that it uh, may be later in the week, next week, to make sure that we uh, have it legally in place sure. uh, to be effective. So what are the next steps? 
on, um, on getting cannabis oil available to the families and we should also say to the adults who are covered by the, I think, seven conditions you ended up with uh, that will be allowed to use cannabis oil. What are the next steps? Well, there are actually eight conditions in the bill. Okay. And, um, and the next step will be setting up the registration process. An individual or a citizen with one of the qualifying conditions will need to get a recommendation from a physician uh, that they do have that qualifying condition uh, and that, that this physician recommends it for cannabis oil. They will then take this certification from their physician to the Department of Public Health to uh, become registered with uh, the state that they are eligible to have a registration card which provides them immunity uh, from prosecution. And so that's a key step. We're going to, we've already working with the agencies to make sure we fast track that. I'm hoping it'll happen in the uh, next 30 or 45 days, uh, happen real quick so we can start bringing our medical refugees home as soon as possible. And what about production of cannabis oil and getting it to those families in a state that doesn't allow production at this point? Well, until we have an in-state infrastructure that provides a safe and effective <laughs> product uh, and delivery system for cannabis oil, there are going to be logistical challenges for our families and our citizens. Right now, citizens will be able to go to another state, obtain it legally, and bring it back to Georgia. Once they're back to Georgia, they'll have immunity from prosecution. We have a couple of manufacturers that are prepared to ship the product to families uh, who need it with, that have kids with seizure disorders. They are prepared to do that. They're able to ship it legally because it's so low in THC, it's considered hemp. Um, but the, the key, one of the key parts of this bill is the commission that's created that will be required to provide a recommendation to the General Assembly and the Governor by December of 2015 of what is the best model for an infrastructure that provides uh, a delivery system for cannabis here in Georgia. Let me bring uh, Senator Harbison into the conversation if I can. Um, Senator, were you uh, disappointed as this bill moved forward? Early on, of course, Representative Peek had a provision in his bill that would include uh, production in Georgia, allow for it to begin in Georgia, and of course that went out quite a while ago. Um, do you think that's a, a one kind of uh, flaw in what otherwise people are really celebrating tonight? Well, I, I wouldn't consider it a flaw, just a hiccup in, in the passage of the bill, and I just have nothing but high praise and, and commendation for Alan Peak for the work he did. I mean, it's just a yeoman's task. I mean, I, it's just a bill that everybody should feel good about being a legislator. There so are really one, few measures. Yeah. We've said this several That's times right. during this process that have generated the kind of emotion. That's right. You know, you all are, a, you're not an emotional body very often down there, the House or the Senate. But this has generated enormous emotion, hasn't it? It, it has, and you feel it. And, and you, this is the, the, the benefit for being le a good legislator sometimes. Say, I can brag about one good thing with it. We bicker a lot, as we should, because we need to make the sausage and make it right with the right <laughs> ingredients. But and the, what uh, Representative Pete did, his yeoman task in that area, is to be highly commended. Greg, I don't know if you got a chance to uh, talk to any of the families. Uh, did you? Did you personally talk to any? I know you have several reporters on this story. Sure. I mean, it was relief. I mean, remember, when Representative Peake first proposed this a few years ago, it seemed like the longest of long shots. And now in just a span of a few years, it's gone from that to a passage where the governor is now fully on board, both parties, bipartisan support. I mean, it's really uh, incredible. Representative Peake, can you share with us what you said to some of the families who were there yesterday when you had final passage on this bill and what they said to you? Well, I, it was an overwhelming moment, and I was overjoyed uh, for them because I knew the, uh, that they had worked so hard. You know, and Senator Harbison's words are kind, and I, and, but, but let me tell you, there were a lot of legislators involved in this issue. I've gotten way too much credit on it, uh, but there were people who really uh, worked really hard on both sides of the aisle and both chambers to make this happen. But the real heroes on this, in this issue are the families, the families of these special needs kids who lobby their legislator day after day for the last two years who came and shared their story and shared their hearts uh, they're the ones really that are the real heroes in this whole effort and uh, and and really are due all the credit for getting this bill passed uh, at this uh, at this time this year so what did they say to you yesterday um, as they were on the floor with you uh, uh, celebrating this moment well they were they were very grateful uh, they, they knew They've seen the folks that 
the children whose lives have been changed by taking cannabis oil out in Colorado. They talk to them all the time. These 17 families that have been out there, they know the difference in the quality of life that this can provide uh, for their kids. And so th they were grateful that now they'll have an opportunity to be able to access cannabis oil, possibly have a significant improvement in the quality of life for their child. And so uh, it was a very, very special moment and one I'll remember uh, all of my life. Greg Bluestein, uh, just a moment ago, our line producer, Kiosha Howard, uh, said in my ear, he is grinning like a Cheshire cat down there at the Capitol. <laughs> I think the next question for you, uh, Representative Peak, is what do you do next? And the only answer is I'm going to Disney. Disney World. Well, it's, uh, this has been, a, it's like I said, it's been an emotional week and, uh, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful to have all this accomplished before the crazy chaos of the last week of the season <laughs> and, uh, and glad to have it behind us. Greg, so uh, the bill signing, uh, maybe a week off. Um, but we know the governor is going to sign this bill and move this forward. And what Representative Peake said was right. He's glad it's not going to those, these final days where it could be held up as a hostage mm -hmm. from bills. It's happened of, last session. It's happened last session. It's, it's done. All right. Look, uh, Representative Peake, congratulations to you. Thank you so much for taking time to join us. I hope you get to relax a little these last three days of the session. You've well, accomplished I'm, your big measure. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to enjoy this and celebrate a little bit this, uh, this weekend, but thank you for having me. All right. Thank you so much. Alan Peak, who uh, got final passage on his uh, medical marijuana bill in the House yesterday. Still ahead tonight, Senate Democrat Ed Harbison joins us to look at some of the other key issues lawmakers are facing in the last few days of this year's session. We'll be right back. If you're a good Georgian, you love your barbecue. I think that's awesome. Yeah. There's flavor to it. I want to eat some barbecue. Okay. That is meaty deliciousness. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Friday at 8 on GPP. There are great music festivals in the world, but there are very few that bring these kind of musicians all together under the same roof. The Savannah Music Festival celebrates its return for a 26th season in 2015. A world-class celebration of musical arts spanning March 19th through April 4th. Renowned artists in jazz, classical, Americana, and world music make this Georgia's largest musical arts event. Get tickets now at savannahmusicfestival.org. This is 88.5 FM, Atlanta's new source for your news and information. Good morning. Let's start the conversation. What's on your mind, Atlanta? We want to hear from you. The news and information you've been looking for is here on 88.5. From Peachtree City to Piedmont Park, from Norcross to Decatur, GPB Atlanta is the source for stories from your community. All news, all information, all day. On this date, March 26, 1935, Governor Eugene Talmadge signed a joint resolution of the General Assembly requiring every teacher in Georgia's public schools to sign an oath of allegiance to Georgia and the United States. It also called on them to refrain from directly or indirectly subscribing to or teaching any theory of government or economics which is inconsistent with the fundamental principles of patriotism high ideals of Americanism. Welcome back to welcome back to Lawmakers. We're here tonight with Greg Bluestein, political reporter for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and Senator Ed Harbison, a Democrat from Columbus, stays with us. Thank you, Senator, for uh, you. coming into the studio for our broadcast tonight. Thank you. Well, let me, let's take a look at some of the big measures that are still up for grabs, and then let's talk a little bit about the, some of the projects you care deeply about personally. Um, transportation. Yeah. Greg Bluestein, <laughs> we are now uh, at, a conf we're at the stage of a conference committee on this bill. What are the major differences they have to work out? And we'll ask a uh, senator about. <laughs> there's a big gulf between the yeah, two. Yeah. Um, there's a gulf on the excise tax. Uh, the, the Senate plan has a considerably lower excise tax per gallon than the House plan. 
The Senate plan has a fee on rental cars that the House plan doesn't have. And the House plan raises a lot more money than the Senate plan has. So these conferees have a lot to work out. Mm. So, Senator, what, what, are your th- what are you thinking about how this is all going to well, come together? Well, we've been hearing from, you know, the car rental places and enterprise and citizens about increased taxes, $50 and $25 respectively for cars and trucks, that kind of thing. They give us calls on they don't They don't like that kind of thing. But uh, in, in the final analysis, and I'm going to put it on the table. I think the transportation bill has to be well vetted and is getting that right now. The conference committee named yesterday uh, on, 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 on in, in the state, in the Senate, at least the players are named. And, and they're going to have to uh, deal with what goes in, what goes out. One of the things I think came out well, from a motional, a procedural motion from Senator Heath uh, was the fact that he wanted to restrict the uh, lawmakers on that conference committee to certain things they could or could not do. It was he, a very interesting yeah, he was aiming spe- move. Yes, he was specifically aiming for Delta. That was the bottom line. Just put it put it on the table. He doesn't want that tax break that, to continue for Delta. Because Airlines. he said now it's not needed. Right. We gave it to him when we need it. Now he's saying we don't. That was an interesting procedural uh, uh, debate in the Senate this afternoon. Um, the notion that a conference committee should have its hand, the Senate conference committee should have its hands tied mm-hmm. uh, by a a vote in the Senate that you cannot negotiate on this, 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 and this. We really, I don't recall ever seeing anything like that take place No, and, and usually these conference committees, everything is on the table. And, and so there, there could be a significantly different bill than we've even seen from either of the chambers come out of this conference committee. And that's why there was such a pushback on, mm-hmm. on having your hands tied at all. Mm-hmm. Senator, down in uh, your area, down there near Columbus, Macon area, that whole area, um, your folks voted for t Absolutely, a couple of years Absolutely. back. They said, yes, raise our taxes to improve our transportation. And we passed it. You and were. you passed it. That's right. Do you feel like that any of the constituents down there are going to feel a little sense of pushback that they're now being asked to absorb a state excise tax that's uh, higher? And the second bite of the apple, so to speak. They have yeah. to do the same thing over again, clearly. Uh, we've gotten that mm-hmm. input. Uh, we've heard that. Uh, but it's that when you get this kind of push from the office on the second floor, you, something is going to happen. The governor's right office is no, on the, the second the, floor, absolutely, isn't it, Senator? Absolutely. Something <laughs> is going to happen. But you're absolutely correct. We did what we were supposed to do based on the formula that was presented to us. We passed the T-splosh to make, take care of this kind of thing. Here we come again facing the same issue because the rest of Georgia say, hey, look, no way. But uh, you, we got to do it. I think there's something got to be done. But there are concerns from the Democratic caucus that they want to make sure there are certain philosophical things attached, there are certain taxes be dealt with. And they have some real concerns about those 25 and $50 hits on the consumer. The, uh, well, the, now, am I correct that the highway user fee that was established in the <coughs> first version of the Senate bill, $25, didn't end up passing in the Senate, right? Right. It was stripped out in, through an amendment because uh, of concerns that the GOP caucus wouldn't vote for it. That's right. right. That's okay. Right. So that's, that's gone. Right. That's right. That's, that's right. not going to reemerge. That, in a well, conference. no, it could. could be. I mean, there's it, always a chance. In the conference committee, anything goes. Okay. I mean, not, not anything, but, you know, theoretically, anything could be applied. Okay. To make things okay. Um, so that'll be interesting to watch. The yeah. Senate uh, has the uh, had um, also still has uh, in the conference committee. They'll look at the five dollar rental car user fee. Mm-hmm. That's right. With the, which the rental car companies are five dollars a day about. Yeah. yeah. Five dollars a day. Which the rental car companies are screaming about. Exactly. And, 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 the, and the reason these fees <clears throat> survive is because the lawmakers can pass them and say there weren't tax increases. They're just fees. Even if they are, you know, to, to, to the you know, voters out there seem like a tax increase. They can be passed off as a fee. That's why these these ideas still generate some some passion and some uh, some some energy behind them. Let, let me ask you one last question and then move on, if I could. Um, you know, the, one of the themes throughout this session <clears throat> has been if you're going to go ahead and increase a tax on, and, and this is a tax increase. Yeah, I think yeah, we all agree yes. with that, right? Um, the Senate kind of took the lower. The easier pathway, your excise tax is five cents That's lower right. than right. the House uh, tax. Is that a mistake? If you're going to go ahead and be vulnerable on taxes, why not go the whole route? Right. And, and in addition to that, I think we, it's, a, it's a big plug in this, big hole in it plug up in the first place, because it does not, I think, come short of the billion dollars that's needed you needed something like another two hundred uh, million to to fill that gap, and where is that going to? Come? Will you vote for a twenty-nine if it comes out of committee, conference committee, with a twenty-nine cent 
excise tax. Are you okay with that? I'm, I'm not committed. I'm not committed to anything right now. I'm okay. committed to listening very carefully what the details are and then make a decision at that point. Okay. So that you can get good. in trouble by early commitment. Right? But his vote won't be needed. I mean, Democrats will play an influential role. They have, they, yes. they, they play the swing vote on this, in this bill. Absolutely. Um, Senator, let's move on. Uh, Opportunity Schools is now uh, uh, basically done. There will be a constitutional amendment on the ballot to allow the uh, governor and sure. his uh, apparatus to take over failing schools. How do you think that's going to play back in your district? Um, uh, what, what, you know what, I'm, I'm for really improving our schools and make them as best they can be because children, it's just a cliche to say children are our future, but clearly that's the truth. And I think what you get in is what you put out. You put, out, put in good stuff, you get good stuff back. I think we need to be very careful about restructuring and making sure they get good basic education and all the stuff about you coming into community and making sure that the people who were elected to deal with the issues at that level take a bite out of the apple and make sure they feel invested, that they buy into the program. And I think that is what given pause for Let's put the resolution up on the right. screen, actually, that is going to be uh, up for grabs. Shall the Constitution of Georgia be amended to allow the state to intervene in chronically failing public schools in order to perform, improve student performance? Craig Bluestein, what, what, look into your political crystal ball. As we, we won't have this on the ballot for another year and a half, mm -hmm. 2016, mm -hmm. how big, the f big a fight do you imagine there's going to be over this uh, to get this thing passed by real voters? I mean, think about it. This, this is the governor's signature legislative initiative. So he will be putting, him and his allies will be putting all their political capital, mm -hmm. their political muscle behind getting this passed. There's no, you know, it's a very innocuous sounding piece of a piece, uh, constitutional amendment. There's no word of taxes or increases or anything <laughs> like that. There would be a big red flag to voters. So there will be a campaign, a very, a very forceful ballot initiative campaign to get this thing passed. And, and he's right. It's formidable. There's no doubt about it. Whenever you get that kind of uh, push from the governor's office. Uh, and, and, and let me say, in, in all fairness, that I believe that we really need to do something to help out. And I think there's, the difference is how we go about doing it, how we apply it, and what role does the local government play? How do the local people play into this? If, if we're not on board, if they're not on board, then they're gonna, it's going to be foot dragging and you may not have the success that you otherwise would. We are Almost out of time. You can see, though, right now, the Opportunity School plan, uh, the major uh, breakout points, the, the PowerPoint version of it uh, up there on the screen. So we'll let uh, our viewers absorb that. But, Senator, we only have a couple minutes left. You've been in the legislature since 1993. Yes, sir. Take just a minute to talk to us about why uh, our military active duty service and our veterans has been such an important issue for you. Oh, absolutely. Of course, I'm dedicated to it as a Vietnam combat veteran who fought in Vietnam. We came home to people saying that we should feel ashamed. Uh, we as Vietnam veterans for sure are making sure that all the veterans that come after us don't face this kind of kind of pushback from our own public that we go to defend. What are you proudest of in that I, I'm, I'm proudest of the General Assembly for past, we passed the, the, the Purple Heart State Bill, we passed the... Which did what? The, the Purple Heart Bill designated the state of Georgia as a Purple Heart State would recognize that sacrifice by our veterans. In addition, it established the Veterans Court Bill that makes a uniformity of the veteran courts, how they go in there and deal with people and steal some esprit de corps from veterans who have some relatively minor infraction with the law, and they get a second chance, a, 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 a sort of reprieve to come back and redo it better next time rather than being thrown away and discarded in society. We also should point out that you are a former television anchorman from Columbus, Georgia, and so when you get cues in your ears, as I'm getting right now, about it's time to wrap things up, you know how to do that, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> so with that, I thank you so much for being here. Uh, Senator Harbison, Greg Bluestein, always a pleasure to have you here as well. So we can all check off day 37 of the 2015 session. That leaves us with just three more days left. Can we say thank goodness? And that includes tomorrow. We'll be here tomorrow night to bring you the very latest. In the meantime, stay in touch with us on social media or email us at lawmakers at gpb.org. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Have a great evening.
This is a GPB original production.